In talking about linear thrusters, you know, obviously there's an air cylinder in the middle of this, but this whole device is called a linear thrust. And you'll see these rods that go through this block. The rods themselves will take the side force away from the cylinder. Now a common mistake that's made is that this, this assembly can bind in its operation. And when it binds, people think, turn up the air pressure. But that's not necessarily true. Right now, you'll notice that this, that this cylinder is not tight in there. And the reason why we don't have it tight is so that it will not bind. There's three sliding rods here. And to think that all three rods will be exactly parallel with each other for the full distance is kind of a fallacy. It's really not going to happen. So there's things that you can do to make sure that the, uh, the system works. I'll show you the operation here as it is. This is with, is with 40 PSI of air pressure. Now watch this area here as, this, as the cylinder operates. You're going to see this move slightly. See it move? And you say, why is it moving? Well, the reason it's moving is because this cylinder rod is not exactly parallel with the, with the linear thrust rods. And because they're not exactly parallel, something's got to give. So, again, you'll see that cylinder move a little bit. Okay, now what we're gonna do is we're going to Take the air the the uh, air lines off the cylinder. We're going to take this jam nut loose, and we're going to turn the rod out of this block so that we can tighten up the end cap of the cylinder into this block. And when we do that, you're going to see this unit bind up. To uh, disconnect this the air cylinder from the linear thrust active block here, what we need to do is de-energize, take the air away from the, from the cylinder. To do that, we take the air away from the solenoid and then we disconnect the air lines so that we can actually move the cylinder. So we'll pull those air lines off. Once we have that, now we can move the cylinder out. We're going to take that cylinder out and we're going to break this nut loose and then actually turn the, we're turning the cylinder rod out of the linear thrust block. And then we're sliding that back in. Once we have it slid back in, I got an inch and an eighth socket here. I'm just going to tighten this up willy-nilly wherever it happens to be. All right, there it's tight. Now we're going to hook it back up. Turn it in. Okay, jam it back down again. Hook our airlines back up. Oh, what's the matter, Keith? Can't you push it in? Oh, it's it's binding already. Imagine that. So this is a problem that we see with linear thrusters, is that they'll actually have the nut too tight. Because of that, that cylinder is tight. The axis of that cylinder does not completely line up with the axis of the rods for the linear thrust. Therefore, it binds, you know. Oh my goodness, we can't orbit. pull it out. But look, it flows nice out there. But when we get in close, suddenly we can't pull it in. Well, that air cylinder can't pull it in either. And when, if it tries, it's going to jerk and come to a stop. So, what you have to do is find a, find a happy medium. Again, so we're going to adjust the nylox nut that holds that cylinder in place. So we have to take the rod loose here, again. We have to turn the rod out of the linear thrust block, and then push the rod back in. And once it's in, now we can take our socket, and it's time to loosen it up. So now how, how loose is loose? You're going to ask. Just a little bit. There's maybe an eighth of a turn and 
You can see how the cylinder can now move around a bit. All right, so now we've taken the cylinder. Now we can thread the rod back into the live block of the linear thrust. Run it up until the jam nut touches. And then jam the nut. And you're gonna know quite soon how you got it do because you're either gonna push, well, we don't have it quite loose enough, do we? Look at there. So, we gotta loosen it up a little bit more for this particular cylinder. Now, this rod may actually be bent, but even if the rod is bent a little bit, you can still utilize the linear thrust by adjusting this nylox nut a little bit looser. Now, a common misconception is that the nylon, the nylon of the nylox nut is actually, people think that it's an O-ring, which it is not. And sometimes the, ni the nylon of the nylox nut can deform a little bit and look like it's coming out and they think that the O-ring of the cylinder is bad. That's not the case. So don't fall into that trap. All right. Run that cylinder back in. Take our ratchet and give it maybe another eighth of a turn. Pull the cylinder back out. Run the rod, turn the rod back into the, into the linear thrust. Once again, tighten it up with the jam nut. All right, are we gonna be able to go all the way back in now? What do you know? Do you see how this moves a little bit? I'll put it over on this side. See how it moved off of there? That's more than likely because that air cylinder rod is not perfectly straight. But as you'll see when we hook it up, it's still gonna work just fine. So we'll hook up our air cylinder lines again, energize our system, and presto, she pulls in. And how do you know we're working again? All right, what have we learned? If we want ultimate speed, which it seems everybody always does, it's okay to take your, your flow restrictors, which control speed, and turn those out. And in this case, we have them all the way out, but we're sitting down here at about 35 PSI. So it's only 35 pounds per square inch of air pressure to make it go that fast. Well, I'm a speed demon here, so I wanna turn up the air pressure. So we'll turn it up to a ridiculous, say, 90 PSI. All right, here we are at 90 PSI. Bam, bam. If you notice, even at 90 PSI, because we have our cushions turned in, we're getting a nice cushioning effect at the end of the stroke. See it right there? That will save that cylinder. Even though that cylinder is now operating as fast as it's completely capable of running, because the cushions are taking effect at the end of the stroke, again, watch the end of the stroke now. It's cushioning that blow it's like landing on a pillow instead of a instead of a concrete block.